Hello everyone, my name is Nirmal Tevaratantri and I'm part of our Advanced Networking Global Black Belt team. Today I'm going to walk you through two different patterns on how you can implement Application Gateway with Virtual WAN. Before we get started, I want to give you a quick overview about Application Gateway. Application Gateway is a layer 7 load balancer with multiple functions that I have listed here in my whiteboard. Most notably, we use the Application Gateway as a reverse proxy function, which allows us to provide URL-based redirection and send traffic to a designated backend that we've configured. Outside of this, Application Gateway also can perform web application firewall functionality, which adds protection to our backend resources. So the way how an application gateway works is the user request will go and hit the application gateway front end uh, IP. And this is then would go through and look at the rules configured within the application gateway resource. And then based on the rules, it will go and send traffic to our backend uh, pool. So let's have a look at how we can implement application gateway when we are using virtual van and when virtual van is configured with a secure hub firewall. So in this pattern, we have application gateway on a dedicated VNet. So what happens here is when the users access the application gateway, uh, the request is received by the application gateway and then it gets forwarded to our secure hub firewall. And the secure hub firewall will evaluate based on the rules that's configured on the firewall and decide whether it needs to allow or deny the request to the backend pool. If we have sufficient access control configured within the firewall, traffic would be sent back to the backend pool and then the user is able to reach the backend resource that we've configured. So how do we make this um, work? The way how we have configured Secure Hub is through Firewall Manager, which would mean all of the traffic from this VNet is directed to the firewall. And we also have the same configuration for this VNet where all traffic is sent to the issue firewall. However, because we are accessing this application gateway resource through a public IP, what we have also configured in the VNet connection is not to propagate the default route. So this configuration can be done in two ways. Um, option one is we disable default route propagation part of this VNet connection, which means that this, v, uh, this application gateway VNet is not going to receive the default route advertisement from our secure hub. The second way to implement this pattern is to use a user-defined route and say any traffic that needs to go out to the internet, uh, go out directly instead of coming back to uh, the secure hub firewall. Because if we do send traffic to the Secure Hub firewall, this would be causing asymmetric routing because the packet would enter from the app gateway and then leave from a different uh, traffic path. So let's switch back to my Azure portal and let's have a look at pattern one uh, in action. So in this environment, I have configured application gateway. So let me go to my resource group here I have a few resources configured. So this is my application gateway resource and I have a shared VNet that is where the application gateway is deployed. And then I also have a spoke VNet where the workload is deployed to. So if I go into my shared VNet, in this shared VNet, I have an application gateway um, subnet. So this is where the application gateway is deployed. And as you can see here, I do not have a route table attached to uh, this particular subnet. So the first thing to check is we can check if the application gateway is working as expected. So this is the application gateway and we can see we have a public IP and we also have a DNS assigned to the application gateway. So let's copy this uh, URL open up a new tab and let's see if we can access uh, this uh, website. Yep, so as you can see, we are able to access it. I'm gonna refresh the page a few times and you can see the request count is going up, which means that we are able to reach the backend uh, web service that is hosted uh, inside a VM. 
So let's go and have a look at the application gateway config. So the first thing to look at is uh, my backend pool. So you can see here I have a single target for my backend pool and then I have a virtual machine that is allocated uh, as the uh, target. The other thing that I want to demonstrate in here is my virtual WAN configuration. Now that we've looked at how we've configured application gateway. So here you can see that my virtual WAN is configured with a firewall. So this is a secure hub uh, configuration and I have a firewall deployed. First thing to check would be how the firewall is configured. So here I'm going to move on to my firewall manager configuration. And then I'm going to have a look at how I have configured my firewall. So as you can see here, all traffic, internet traffic is to be sent via the firewall. All private traffic is also to be sent via the firewall. And that is also demonstrated in here. We can see in the UI that we have traffic going via the firewall. The only exemption here is that the shared VNet, which is hosting the application gateway, um, is not protecting internet traffic, which means that traffic from this VNet is going out directly to the internet. So how did we configure that? So once we have set all of the VNets to go via the firewall, what we have done is under VNet connections. This is where we can enable or disable the default route propagation uh, to a VNet connection. So here what we will look at is how to enable and disable the propagation settings. So I'm going to select the, uh, the shared hub VNet and then I'm going to say add. So here you can see we have the option to either enable or disable the default route propagation. So in this instance for app gateway, I have disabled the route uh, propagation. So the drawback in doing this is that because it's applied against the entire VNet. So if you do disable it, if you have other subnets, none of the subnets would receive the default route, which means that the traffic would not be going via the firewall. Uh, instead, the traffic will be leaving the VNet uh, out directly. So in that case, if you want to be more specific, you could apply a user-defined route against the specific subnet that is hosting the application gateway without doing this configuration. Here you can see on the other VNet, we are using the default route propagation, which means all traffic from that VNet going out to the internet will be going through uh, the firewall. So how do we validate this? If we go into the VNet and if I look at some of the devices, so I have a VM uh, that's deployed. If we go to effective routes, we would also be able to see what is the next hop address. Yeah, so here we can see all of the private RFC 1918 prefixes are configured to go to the firewall as next hop. And outside of that, the internet default route is also pointing to the firewall. So we have tried the website and we can see that we are able to access the, uh, the website. So what we need to double check is if the traffic is going via the firewall or not. So how do we validate that? Let's go back to my resource group. Let's go to the firewall resource. And then here, let's go have a look at the uh, logs. So what I will do is I'll run and look at all of the firewall logs. And then we are able to see that there is uh, traffic against port 80 going via the firewall. So this is the source IP. And then this is the uh, destination backend pool IP address that was configured part of the uh, VM that I had deployed. Let's switch back to my whiteboard. We've looked at one pattern where we are deploying app gateway to a shared VNet and then using this VNet to send traffic to the firewall and then from the firewall sending traffic back to the uh, backend VM. The other pattern on implementing application gateway is to deploy application gateway and the backend server on the same VNet. So in this example, what happens is the user traffic goes to the application gateway, and then we can send traffic back to the firewall. The firewall would inspect uh, traffic, would go through the access control that's set up on the firewall, and then the traffic is sent back to the uh, backend um, VM or the backend resource that you've configured. 
So this is the second way to implement uh, this pattern. So few things to note in this pattern. The first thing is that because the application gateway is uh, deployed to a subnet inside the same VNet, so if you do not configure a user-defined route, what happens is the application gateway will be able to reach the backend directly without needing to go via the firewall. So if you need to send all traffic received by the application gateway through the firewall, uh, you must put a user-defined route uh, to the application gateway um, subnet and make sure that you are pointing the traffic to go via the firewall. So with that, let's switch back to my Azure environment and then have a look at how we can configure uh, this setting. So similar to before, uh, in my environment, I have configured Secure Hub firewalls and I have used Firewall Manager for this configuration. So this is the, uh, the second pattern and the environment. So here again, very similar, I have an application gateway, I have my firewall deployed, and the difference here is that there is a single VNet where both the workload and the application gateway is deployed to. So here if I go to subnets, you will see that I have the application subnet, also I have the application gateway subnet, both deployed um, to the same VNet. Here I also have two different user-defined routes, I will go through and explain the configuration that I have in each of these uh, user-defined routes. The first thing to check is uh, to see if the website is working uh, as expected. The best quick way to have a look is also to have a look at the application gateway uh, because this is a layer seven load balancer. It understands the HTTP requests that are coming in. And one of the ways to have a look is if you have any healthy backend host. So here we can see uh, that we do have a healthy uh, backend Host. If it's not healthy, it would be showing up uh, in here as well. So this is a quick way to have a look at how your application um, gateway is performing. The other way is to look at the backend health. This would also give you an indication if you if the application gateway is able to reach uh, your backend services. This is now doing a test. Yep. So it's coming back as uh, healthy and it's a uh, it's success. So in terms of the configuration within App Gateway, it is again very similar. I have configured uh, backend pool, and here I have I'm pointing traffic to my backend VM, which is hosting the web app. So in terms of testing the web app, what we will do is again we will copy the URL, and then let's open up a new tab and see if we can access this uh, web app. Yep, so again, very similar to the other web app that we had. I'm going to send a few requests and we can see that we are able to reach the, uh, reach the web app. IPs are different in here because we have the same VNet now shared across uh, three different subnets. So let's have a look at the user-defined routes that we have configured uh, to make this uh, configuration um, work. So the first thing I will show before I go to user-defined routes is to go through virtual van and show how this is deployed to virtual van. So inside virtual van, you can see that I have a firewall deployed. And if I move to my secure hub configuration, we would also be able to see that we have deployed secure hub configuration. And part of this we've enabled internet and private traffic to go via the uh, Azure firewall. So you can see here, uh, we've configured the firewall. We've also configured private traffic to uh, go via the firewall. This is showing the VNet that I'm using, and it's also showing the internet and private traffic going via the firewall. So the next thing to have a look is, if I switch back to my VNet, um, let's have a look at the user-defined routes. So in order to do that, I'm gonna open up the application gateway user-defined route. So here, what we have is we have two routes. The first one is there's an internet route um, allowing the application gateway to go out uh, to the internet. So that is allowing user requests to come and hit the application gateway and the application gateway to uh, respond back. The other route that I have is when I go to my backend resource, so this is my backend subnet, I am routing traffic via the firewall. So that's the next hop change that I've done for traffic to go via the firewall. And this is then applied to my application gateway subnet. So if I switch back and have a look at the 
use define route applied to my application gateway. So you can see here I have an application gateway route and then this is um, using the application gateway subnet prefix and then I'm saying send traffic to uh, the firewall. So let's see how we can again validate, you know, very similar to how we looked at the previous pattern. How do we know that traffic is going via the firewall? So you can go to logs and then we can look at the, uh, the firewall logs in here. So again, very similar to before, we can see we are able to hit the um, backend resource through the application gateway. And we can see this is the front end IP and this is the backend resource that we are connecting to port 80. And this is going via the firewall. So those are two different patterns, as I mentioned before, on how you can implement application gateway along with uh, secure hubs. The other thing that I want to highlight, we have multiple patterns that we've documented uh, outside of these two patterns that I demonstrated. Uh, one of the patterns is you can expose traffic via the Azure firewall, and then you can use the Azure firewall to send traffic to the application gateway. The drawback in doing this is you lose the um, client IP information when you are sending traffic through the Azure Firewall uh, because the Azure Firewall is going to process the packet looking at the layer 4 uh, information and you would lose the layer 7 uh, information that is sent through your uh, user request. So if you do use application gateway to re request all traffic, uh, what we can do is we can then retain the layer 7 information. So example, things like client IP is retained before the application gateway would NAT the request and then send to uh, the firewall and the firewall will forward the packet to the backend service. So that's an important distinction between uh, using the firewall to accept all traffic versus using application gateway to uh, accept uh, all traffic. So what I have done is in the second pattern, I have um, configured a packet capture uh, on this backend VM just to show you how we retain the client IP address information when we are sending traffic through the app gateway, uh, through the firewall, and then when we send traffic to uh, the backend. So let me quickly demonstrate that. So here I have a Wireshark capture that I have done. And if I move on to the request, uh, this is my request IP. And then again, similar to uh, before, this is the backend. And if I go to the HTTPS uh, information, HTTP information, um, here, if I expand this, we would be able to see all of the X forwarded information. So it's going to show me the X forwarded port. It's also going to show me the uh, IP address where the client information is retained. So if there's any application that needs to uh, take, um, it needs to consider the client user information uh, using the application gateway as a, a front end uh, without using the firewall is a good pattern to be able to retain the client information uh, going to your backend service. So that's all for uh, this demonstration. Uh, thank you all.